voice of business in the greater Chicago area since 1904. And I'm also on the steering committee of the Illinois Business Immigration Coalition. Uh, and we are a bipartisan statewide uh, business uh, group that is focused on uh, fighting for comprehensive immigration reform. And I guess today I'm here to present the business perspective on why comprehensive immigration reform makes sense. But just to step back, I think one of the striking things is the existence of panels such as this around the country today that demonstrate how on so many different issues we have people from different constituencies in this country who are supportive of comprehensive immigration reform. The, the breadth of support for comprehensive immigration reform, in my opinion, there's no other issue in the country today that receives the type of support that immigration reform does. The challenge we have is getting our elected officials to actually enact the legislation that is necessary for our country. And I think when we think about uh, business, when we think about immigration reform, I view it in the sense of three interdependent pillars. Economic growth, quality of life, and justice. And the sister spoke a little bit about the human rights component and the justice component of what happens and why this is necessary. But I'm going to talk a little bit about how immigration reform actually improves everyone's quality of life through improving the economy of this country and improving our neighborhoods and communities. People often cast immigration reform in the sense of something being taken away. If I give something to someone over here on the immigration issue, that's costing someone else who is a non-immigrant something over here. And that's just not the case. Immigration reform is not a zero-sum game. Immigration reform enlarges the entire pie for all of us to share it. And that's an important thing to realize, is when you look at all the economic data relating to immigration reform, it's about improving the lives of everyone, not just the person who is getting status here in the United States, not the new immigrant who will be coming to the United States, but it's the investment that's happening in the communities that we have today that make the difference. There are some amazing statistics about, uh, about the economic impact, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more. In 2011, there was a survey by Deloitte and the National Association of Manufacturers Manufacturing Institute, and in a down economy that we're experiencing right now, there were 600,000 manufacturing positions that could be filled because we didn't have the right skilled labor here in this country. Those are jobs that aren't being created, one of them that need to be filled. We found that, uh, studies have found that if we enact immigration reform, we would increase gross domestic product by 1%, which would have the effect of decreasing the federal deficit by $2.7 trillion over a 10-year period. The economic vitality that's driven by increasing uh, the immigrant population and taking the 11 million undocumented workers who are living in the shadows of our society has such an enormous effect for the benefit of all of us. No one in this country should be marginalized. It's important that we bring everyone out of the shadows side, we look at uh, the number, everyone talks about STEM today, science, technology, engineering, and math. And we have wonderful educa educational institutions across <coughs> the country, in particular in Illinois. And we educate these folks, we invest in them, and then they have to leave because we don't allow them the opportunity to continue to work here and create benefits for us in the United States. It's a shame to make that investment in people. They want to stay. They want to continue to invest in the United States, and they're walking out the door with that education. And the Senate bill deals with these issues by tackling the opportunity, creating the opportunity for people who have education in the STEM areas to actually, if they can get a job offer, to stay in the United States.
another high tech uh, uh, area where jobs could be created is it's estimated for every 100 H1B visa that's granted, 183 new American jobs are created in the United States. These are some of the reasons that comprehensive immigration reform is necessary. The impact in Illinois alone is dramatic. One of the things that is happening in Illinois that is not happening in, in some of the other areas of the country is we've had a population outflow. In the last census, we lost 400,000 people in the state of Illinois, where other areas of the country have grown their population. We have a decline in the birth rates in the United States, and regardless of what happens with immigration reform, immigrant growth, as opposed to natural birth within the United States, would become the leading driver of population in the United States by 2025. If we can harness the energy of immigration in the United States and grow our population and bring people to the state of Illinois in particular by making it more hospitable and creating opportunities for, for employment in Illinois, then the economy in Illinois will continue to grow and create opportunities for all of us here in the state of Illinois. Regional Economic Models, Inc. is a company that's been doing studies on the state impact of immigration reform. And they've concluded that comprehensive immigration reform would increase Illinois' economic output by $1.8 billion and create approximately 19,059 new jobs in 2014. Today, without being engaged actively in, in Illinois, without coming out of the shadows, immigrant population in uh, Illinois in 2009 accounted for 18% of the total economic output in the Chicago metropolitan area. It's also been, this study also found that there would be an increase in state and local taxes paid by immigrants in Illinois by approximately $150 million in 2010 if we had the immigration reform. Those are meaningful dollars today as we go through this recession. These are things that benefit all of us as we go forward. When you listen to the debate about immigration reform, a lot of people are finding different reasons why it's not working. There are lots of people who aren't happy with different components of the reform legislation. But we can't let someone's idea of pursuit of the perfect get in the way of something that's good. This is a compromise package. It's meeting the needs of a lot of diverse communities. It has the best chance for passage that we've seen in any since a long time. And so it's important that we all get behind this legislation and drive it forward and let our elected representatives know that this is essential to move immigration reform forward. So I encourage all of you to support this comprehensive legislation. Let your elected representatives know. Representative Lipinski could use some encouragement from his constituents here to stand behind one of the things that I've also heard folks talk about as a criticism is the concept of amnesty. And I'm not sure if you're going to talk about the distinction between amnesty and earned citizenship, but this is not an amnesty legislation. People have to work very, very hard to get the, uh, to get the golden ring of citizenship under the legislation. And it's important to focus on the fact that what people have to do is they'll have to get citizenship, they have to pass background checks, they have to pay their past taxes and penalties. Uh, they have to go to the back of the line for immigration. But the key is to afford people the opportunity to become citizens of the United States. We have 11 million undocumented uh, residents in the United States. They are not going anywhere. Let's bring them out of the shadows. Let's engage them into the broader community. And let's make this a better place to live to the aspirational dream.